Hello, welcome to our seventh class on financial institutions. In this class, as well as the following one, we will talk about insurance and insurance companies. They are also a type of financial intermediary. In this class, number seven, we will basically talk about some fundamentals of insurance. And of course, we are going to start with what do insurance companies do in general? Well, insurance companies take the risk off of their clients' hands. Insurance companies protect their clients from financial risk. Although there are different kinds of insurance, including life insurance and health insurance, the insurance companies cannot give you life back, cannot give you your health back, so the form of protection that insurance companies provide for even those types of insurance, such as life insurance, is of course financial protection. If a client has a health insurance and becomes sick, what the insurance companies provide is, let's say, coverage of the hospital fees. The insurance company, again, cannot give the health back to the client, so it's the financial risk that insurance companies take off of their client's hands. And of course, they don't do that for free. They charge a fee for that, which is called the premium. In order for insurance companies to exist, they should charge the premiums that are enough to cover all of the claims of their clients, as well as operating costs. And of course, many insurance companies are for-profit organizations, so those premiums should also let the company have some profits. Basically, what it means is that the premiums the clients pay should be greater, maybe even considerably greater, than the expected value of a loss. Why? Why would people pay premiums greater than the expected value? Well, most important reason is that because basically a lot of us, many people are simply risk averse. We don't like risk. Even if you think of yourself as an extreme outdoor player who likes skydiving and similar activities, in our finances, most of us are really risk averse. So when facing a gamble with, let's say, a 1% chance of losing $10,000, a lot of people who are risk averse would prefer to pay, say, $150 to avoid that risk. In this case, $150 is a certainty equivalent, which is actually greater than the expected value of the loss, because a 1% chance of losing $10,000 has an expected value of a loss of only $100. So if an insurance company is able to charge $150 to take that risk off of their clients, and if they have a lot of clients, then the insurance company would be able to cover all of the claims from generally 1% of those clients who do have the losses and there will be some money left to cover the cost of running the business. So risk aversion allows insurance companies basically to exist but there are some other fundamentals of insurance that insurance companies have to stick to in order to continue existing and to survive. First of all is that there must be a relationship between the insured and the beneficiary who would get the benefits in case if something happens to the insured. Additionally, the beneficiary should be the one who suffers if there were no insurance. To give an example for this first fundamental, I, for example, cannot insure your car because there is no relationship between me and your car. It's not my car, it's yours. If insurance companies allow me to do that, they risk becoming bankrupt because then there is an incentive for me to damage your car and receive the compensation. The next fundamental is that the clients should provide accurate and full information to the insurance company so that the company can correctly calculate expected losses and the premiums to charge and all that stuff. An example for this fundamental is, imagine I have this simple little car which 
basically has a price of, uh, I don't know, let's say 15,000 US dollars. I wouldn't be able to insure it for, let's say, over 88,000 US dollars. I would have to provide the accurate information to the insurance company about the value of this car. Otherwise, again, there would be an incentive for me to total this car, which will give me a real loss of only 15,000 US dollars, but I would I would gain a lot of profit from the from the insurance coverage when insurance company compensates me over $88,000. Of course, if this is allowed, insurance companies would not be able to survive. The next fundamental for insurance, which is somewhat similar to the previous one, is of course the beneficiary is not to profit from the insurance. Again, otherwise it creates an incentive for the beneficiary to actually initialize a damage and make a claim for a payout from the insurance company. The next one, which is also related to the previous one again, is if a third party compensates some of the loss, then the insurance company would only have to compensate the remaining part of the loss, rather than the full value of the insurance policy. Again, otherwise there would be profits to be made from insurance and an incentive to initiate the damages artificially. Another very important fundamental for insurance companies and an interesting one because it kind of relates to an interesting mathematical law is the insurance companies must have a large number of clients so that the risks are spread out and whenever they do have a large number of clients their actual losses that they have to compensate will actually be near the expected losses based on the probability of the damages taking place. This is because of the law of large numbers in mathematics. Let's look at an example of flipping a coin. When you flip a coin, what is the probability of heads? Well, it's 50%. So that would be the expected value of heads turning up. If you flip a coin only one time, you will have an actual outcome of either zero heads or one head, either 0% of heads turning up or 100% or of heads turning up. So the actual outcome is quite far from the expected value of 50%. Whereas if you flip a coin 200 times, the actual outcome for number of heads turning up will be much closer to the expected value. That is the law of large numbers. And that is why insurance companies must have a lot of clients. In that case, if for each of those clients, the probability of a loss is, let's say, 1%, and the premiums are slightly above that, with large number of clients, actually around 1% of clients will, will have a loss and the premiums, total amounts of premiums collected will be enough to cover the losses for only about 1% of the clients. So the next fundamental for insurance, which is again somewhat relevant to the previous one, somewhat connected to the previous one, is the things must be quantifiable. The losses themselves and the probability of the losses happening. Otherwise, it's hard for insurance company to charge the correct premiums in order to cover all of the expected losses. An example for this would be a situation where I cannot basically get an insurance against losing a job. I guess it would be difficult to calculate what are my losses and what is the probability of that happening. So these are the fundamentals which are very important for insurance industry in general. And another thing that is important for insurance industry, the last thing for us to talk about today, is asymmetric information problems. Both adverse selection and moral hazard are a big deal for insurance. Those who are more likely to suffer losses are the ones who would really want to apply for insurance. But the insurance company would actually want to have clients who are less likely to suffer a loss. So those of us who are less healthy are of course more likely to apply for health insurance. However, in case of unhealthy clients, 
there is a greater probability that the insurance company will have to cover some claims and that makes it an adverse selection problem. Moral hazard is also important for insurance. The gist here is that having insurance might make the clients less careful because if there are any losses, those losses would be covered by the insurance company. For example, if I do have a car insurance on my car, I might become a little bit less of a careful driver. Because if there are any bumps or scratches, those would be covered by the insurance. That's all for now. Stay tuned for the next class next week, where we'll talk about different types of insurance policies.